there, and welcome to Rehoboth United. Thank you so much for spending part of your day with us. We are so glad you're here. My name is Pam. I'm your host. Worship service will begin shortly with an opening from one of our church leaders, followed by a few song selections from our praise team. The lyrics will be on the screen so you can sing along and engage in worship service however you feel comfortable. Afterwards, the Word of God will be brought forth. We pray that you feel welcome and enjoy today's service. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. Glory to his name. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Woke you up this morning. Woke me up this morning. Started us on our way. The blood yet running warm in our veins. He's worthy. Is he not worthy this morning? Is he not worthy this morning? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's that time again. It's church time. Hallelujah. We thank God this morning for all that's here. But we've come one more time to the house of worship. We've come together. How good it is, brothers, to come together and fellowship. We just thank God this morning for he's a good guy. And he brought you and I over those highways and we can look at each other. Man, that's an awesome thing to give God some praise for. And then we thank God. It's service time. And if you have noticed our scripture for this morning, Mark the 11th chapter, just a few verses, starting at verse 22, Mark 11th chapter. And Jesus answered, saith unto them, Have faith in God. But verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, 
and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he has said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and you shall have them. God bless his word. Let us pray. Gracious Master, most true and living God, it's again that we come. We say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for another opportunity, Lord God, to do, Lord God, service unto you, Lord God, to show forth your love and kindness, Lord God, to tell you thank you, Lord God, for all the benefits you have brought toward us this week, this day, Lord God, this morning, Lord God, we say thank you. We just want to thank you, Lord God. There's nothing that we could have done or said that was so great, but because of your love and kindness, your kindness and your mercy, Lord, we say thank you. Father, we ask you now just to have your way, Lord God. There are those who are traveling over the highways, God, be with them, Lord. Safe travel, Lord God. There's someone, Lord God, sick, Lord God. You know where they are, Lord. Touch them at their point of need, Lord God. Whatever it is needed, Lord God, we know you already know. We pray, Lord God, for our politician, Lord, our religious leaders, Lord God, our social leaders, Lord God, our doctors, Lord. We pray, Lord God, for this nation, Lord God. We pray for peace, Lord God, but we know that shall come when you shall appear, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that your will will be done, Lord God, on earth as it is in heaven, Lord God. We pray, God, you come into this place, Lord God, on Beltline this morning, Lord God, and have your way, God. Let thou shall count of glory go forth, Lord God. Let your people, Lord God, rejoice, Lord God, and give you praise, give you honor, and give you glory, Lord God. For you have made us and not we ourselves, Lord, and we say thank you, Lord. We pray this morning all over this world and country, Lord God, who shall stand before the people and give thus says the Lord God, the truth, Lord God. We pray you be with them, Lord, to hide them behind the cross, Lord God, and just give your word, Lord God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you, Lord, to have your way, Lord God. Have your way, Lord God. Have your way, Lord God. Let there be a sound, God, of Pentecost, Lord God, in these days and time, Lord. In this place, Lord God, where you are honored, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Somebody, God, is hungry, Lord God, for salvation, Lord God. We pray they be fed, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, every sickness, Lord, every disease, Lord God, everything that's not like you, Lord God. We come against it this morning. We pray in the name of Jesus. And we look for healing, deliverance, Lord God. In the name of have your way, Lord God. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we will praise you. We will adore you. We will magnify you. We will lift you up, Lord God. For it's you, Lord God, who kept us and not we ourselves. And we say thank you. Send your word, Lord. Send your word, Lord God. Send your word, Lord God. Send your word, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. Bless the man servant, God. Send your word, God. So we'll give you the praise. We give you honor in Jesus' name. Somebody give God some praise. Somebody thank God. Now thank him like you want to thank him. Thank him like he did something for you all week long. Thank him because he woke you up this morning. Ah, uh, I praise God. But I'm not going to force you to praise God. But we ought to be thankful because somebody didn't and won't get this opportunity this morning to give God praise. But let's give God some praise as the praise sees come. Come on, let's give it. Oh, come on, we got to get the atmosphere right. Give God some praise. Give God some praise.
If y'all know this, y'all can sing along with us. Hallelujah. We're going to start out proclaiming Lord. Release your 
his presence to fall on us. Hallelujah. 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 So come on, we got to pick up the praise just a little bit more. Hallelujah. Like I always said, I can't make you do it, but I can encourage you to join us as we give God praise. Hallelujah. So we're going to lift our hands. Hallelujah. We're going to clap our hands.
blesses you with and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the rest of my days, I got to give God some praise. Hallelujah. Because I'm always standing right here because of his grace and mercy. Hallelujah. 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 Because he gives me personally, I got to speak for me right now. He gives me so much joy. Hallelujah. Down deep in my soul. Hallelujah. 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 Sometimes it's so hard to contain it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But y'all got to join. Join us together. And we speak about the joy that he brings down in each of our hearts, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. There's beauty.
Come on, everyone standing to your feet. Anybody in here have joy today? Anybody in here got joy today? You give me joy. You give me joy. Deep in my soul. That's what it's all about. He gives us joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. I don't care what you are going through today. If you will let the joy of the Lord be your strength, you could have went through something last night, but when you got up this morning, everything was all right. Everything was all right. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy. I say, but joy comes in the morning. more if you believe that put your hands together let's give God some praise in this place let's give God some praise in this place for the joy of the Lord is your strength with joy you draw water from the wells of salvation he gives me joy. I bless you. God bless you. We thank God for his love. We thank him for his kindness. We thank him for the multitudes. And I mean multitudes of blessings that he bestows upon us. Like say thanks to our praise team. They're a little short this morning. Thank God for our band. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We truly thank God for blessing us and affording us this privilege to be back in the house of the Lord. As we are here, we're going to lift up his high and his holy name. The Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad, and we praise him for that today. Today, we want to honor Mother Lorik in her absence. Amen. We want to honor Lady Mary. God bless you. And to my wife, Lady Frankie. Amen. We thank God for our elders, our ministers, our evangelists, our deacons, our mothers, to everybody in here. We thank God for you in Jesus' name. I feel a little churchy. Amen. We'll go old school. Y'all can find me. What a mighty God we said. What a mighty God we said. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we said. What a mighty God we said. What a mighty God we said. We said, the angels bow before him. What a mighty God. 
Jesus is that God we say. Jesus is that God we say. Angels bow before him. God, I say, if you believe we serve a mighty God, put your hands together like we serve a mighty God. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Now what you gonna do? I say angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Now what you gonna do? It's your time. What you gonna do? He's a mighty God. Amen, we praise him today. Jesus name Well two or three catching a hope We'll wait. I said, we'll wait. If you feel like praising them, we'll wait. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. thank God for everyone here today. We're getting ready to go into the word of God. But before we do, we thank God for all of you that are present. Thank God for our visitors. And as you look around, there are a lot of people out today. Amen. And some of them are traveling. And we just ask that you continue to pray that the Lord will give them traveling mercies 
in the name of our Lord. We would like to recognize a couple first-time visitors, uh, Reggie and Marshall family. If you're here, uh, God bless you. God bless you. Any other first-time visitors? God bless you. Thank you so very much. As we always say, thank you for choosing Rehoboth to worship the Lord today. You passed a whole lot of churches to get here. But we thank God that you are here in Jesus' name. We're so glad for you. As we always say, we'll get upset if we don't see you again. Man, so we just thank God. Come on, Rehoboth, let's show them some love. In Jesus' name. We're getting ready to go into the word of God. And I'll tell you before I even get started, I had a tussle with the Lord. I said, Lord, here we are again. I'm trying to tell somebody to get their miracle. I said, I already told them that. The last Sunday, Elder Mac come talking about put it in his hand. I, I, I had a struggle. I said, Lord, you got something else I can give him. But uh, after a while, when I got into it, it's for this moment. Amen. I want you to stand at this time. We'll go into the word of God. Before we go into the word, before I read, the Lord gave me a statement and I'm going to give it to you right now. And he says, when you seek God's presence and ask him to intervene in your situation, you can see miracles happen. Why? Because God has power over all creation. He has power over everything and he has the ability to work a miracle for you. He has the ability to work a miracle for you. Now I want you to talk to yourself right now and say he has the ability to work a miracle for me. Now tell your neighbor he has the ability to work a miracle for you. For you. For you. Like to read in your hearing at this time. John chapter 11. Verses 41 through 44. And it reads, and they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou heareth me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth bound hand and foot with grave clothes and his face was bound about with a napkin 
Jesus says unto them, Loose the man and let him go. Loose the man and let him go. My subject to you today, it's not dead. It's not dead. Tell somebody it's not dead. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your love and your kindness. We thank you for this time that you've given us to speak the truth of God. I pray that the word will fall on ears that were here today. In the name of Jesus, you sent your word to heal us. And God, you sent your word to get us out of situations. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will have your way today. Remove stony hearts. Replace them with hearts of flesh. Anybody under the sound of my voice that will hear you today, I pray that you move in their situation in the name of Jesus, bless us and we will be blessed. Keep us and we will be kept. In the name of Jesus, send on your anointing. The anointing that's going to make preaching easy. The anointing that's going to cause your people to hear what you're saying. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask all these blessings. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated. It's not dead. It's not dead. As we read, we started reading in the book of John. John is the last of the Gospels. Uh, we read John, and we can tell that John is not one of the synoptic Gospels, but John had a distinct method of writing. The synoptic Gospels were Gospels and messages that were basically the same thing. Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Mark's writings were first. It should have been Mark, Matthew, and Luke. Their synoptic writings meant that they were similar in nature. They told the same story, mm -hmm, but they were speaking to different groups of people. Matthew's gospel was written to the Jews, trying to get them to understand that this Jesus is the Messiah. Mark's gospel was written to the Romans to try to show them that this man who's dying a criminal's death uh -huh, is the risen Savior. Luke's gospel was written to the Greek, to let them know that all these religions that you are practicing, there is one religion called Christianity. That's the one that you ought to follow. But John's gospel was written not to a particular people, but it was written for everybody. And John wanted to convince everybody that this man named Jesus that you need to know him in a very real way. Anybody in here today want to know him in a very real way? Anybody want to get close to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? You want to be able to touch him? And he touches you back. John wanted them to know as he wrote in John 1 and 1, he says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God the same was in the beginning with God 
And also in John 1, 14, he says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Then he says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He so loved the world that he died for you and for me. Then he says in John 14 and 6, he says, I am the way. I'm the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He is my Savior. He's a miracle worker today just as he was back then. What I'm going to do today, I'm going to give you an account. I'm going to just let you see some of the miracles. And I hope that it increases your faith when you see and reflect on what God did in his word. Look at this. Jesus raised the dead. He raised someone from the dead in every instance I'm going to give you now. But when I was tussling with this message, not tussling, but didn't want to do it. He began to remind me that I gave this ministry a theme for this year. A supernatural shift. And you can look around and you can see that that is really what he has done for us. There are miracles right among us where he shifted situations. You gave up, but he didn't give up on you. Folk around you gave up on you, but he gave you a miracle. He was able to shift it. You couldn't say anything, but that was God. That's what he's been doing. And he reminded me that I'm going to continue to bless my people. The year is not over. And I got more in store for you. In Mark chapter 5, we read a very familiar story. The story of Jairus. Jairus came and fell at Jesus' feet. And he says, come Lord, come quickly. Lay your hands on my daughter because she is sick unto death. But the Bible says that Jesus heads to Jairus' home. But on the way, he encounters a woman. A woman that has an issue. And her issue was that she was hemorrhaging. The Bible says it was for 12 years. And then another issue she has, she is unclean. But when she touched the hem of Jesus' garment, the Bible says that she was made whole. You got to understand that the touch is not the thing that brought the healing. It was the faith of this woman that brought her healing. Now all this time, long time, we only focus on the woman touching the hem of his garment and said that was the miracle. But I want you to look at another miracle that I discovered while reading the text. The miracle that I discovered was, it was a miracle that here this woman hemorrhaging for 12 years. The miracle was the fact that she was still alive. 
and able to come and touch the hem of his God. Who in the world can be living and dead at the same time doing 12 years? Losing blood for 12 years and you still here able to touch. Able to exercise your faith. You should have been dead long time ago. That's a miracle. You got to understand. This woman had desperate faith at this time. The real miracle, as I said, was for 12 years. I did it that way because that's a, that's a long time. But God, I say, but God, you living and you dying at the same time. Anybody in here got a but God? Uh-huh. Anybody got, I got a but God. I'm not going to go through my whole testimony, but you're looking at a prostate cancer survivor. It didn't look good, but here I is. I had desperate faith. When the doctor told me what it was, I, I told her, hold on. The room one but so so big but I found myself walking to the corner having a conversation with my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ I'm on this side because that's the corner I went on on the left side and when I told God I just reached and told him God I'm trusting you now and before I knew it I was in the corner I didn't care that I was in the doctor's office. I didn't need no rhythm. I didn't need no music. I just thought about the goodness of Jesus and what he done for me. Now y'all hear how I said that? I thought about the goodness of Jesus and what he had done for me. Now I used my faith. It wasn't done yet. But when I thought about the fact that he was going to do it, I couldn't help but praise him. And look at me now. Go oh, ahead, praise him, brothers. It's, you must have thought of something God did for you. Come on, let's help him praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Some of you ought to join him because he's done something for you. Not only that, you know he's going to do something for you. Go ahead and praise him in advance. Now, Jesus confirmed the fact that this woman had exercised her faith. And he says in verse 34, he says, Daughter, thy faith has made 
the whole. What was the response of this woman? The Bible says she bowed down and she worshiped him. If we want God to do anything for us, we need to bow down before him and worship him. Worship him. Worship Jesus Christ our Lord. We need to declare. We need to declare the deeds of the Lord and give him glory. Let the redeemed of the Lord give proclamation that he has redeemed us from the power of the enemy. Worship him. So even when he healed the woman, people came from Jairus' house and told them, don't bother Jesus no more because his daughter is dead. Don't trouble the master anymore. And I'm sure at this time things were running through folk head. They said, well, if he hadn't taken the time with that woman, he would have been able to make it to Jairus' house. If only this crowd would have let him through, he would have been able to make it to Jairus' house. Listen, sometimes we think that God has mismanaged our situation. He went and looked at somebody else's problem. Brother, Lord, I've been praying a long time. You blessing everybody else. But well, seems like you looking over me. But listen at this. His plan for you is perfect. His plan is going to bring him glory. Listen, don't be a receptacle of the bad news that people brought or that people bring to you. Don't accept it. You know what God can do. You have prayed and you know what God will do. Look at what Jesus did when he heard what the people were saying. Listen at what he told Jairus. He says, be not afraid. Only believe. Only believe. And that's a word that God has for us today. He wants us to only believe. Allow fear to be intercepted by faith I thought that was profound I'm going to say it again put it on rewind allow fear to be intercepted by faith replace your fear Replace your anxiety and put some faith in its place and watch God work in your situation. Only believe. Believe he has the power over the storms that you go through. Believe that he can do it. He can do what no other power can do. So he heads to Jairus' house and he takes only a few with him. Uh huh. The inner circle. He takes Peter, James, and John with him. Mm -hmm. They believed in the miracles that God had done, that Jesus had done in the lives of people. Listen at this. When he approaches Jairus' house, 
the mourners are there. They're going crazy. Some of them are paid. Some of them are family. But as he approaches the house, he says, what's this all? What's all this to do? What's all, what's, what's all this fuss? So he puts them to the side. He forgets about them. And he goes and does what he does. And that is to work miracles. That is to bring change in people's situations. I got a message for you today. Some people around you, you need to get rid of. The mourners that's hanging around you, put them to the side. They're not going where you're going. They don't have the faith that you have. Your faith is headed for another level. Put them out. They cannot handle the capacity of your faith. Your faith is going to a new level. You don't need anybody pulling you down. Jesus says, the damsel is not dead. She's asleep. They stopped their mourning and began to laugh. What are you talking about? <laughs> she is dead. We saw her dead. But Jesus knew all about the situation. Why are y'all crying and acting crazy? This girl is not dead. So he put them out. He takes only a few with him. And he prays. I'm telling you today, we need to get rid of some folk that are, around, that are around us. If their faith is not aligning with your faith, put them out. If they can't believe for a miracle in your life, put them out. It might be family. It might be friends that you have known for a long time. If they can't trust and believe God with you, put them out. Do it nicely, though. I tried to find a nice way for you to do it. Tell them this. You cannot allow my faith and their faltering faith to hinder you any longer. Mother, father, sister, brother, I don't care who it is. Put them out. Put them out. Listen. It could be that some of the miracles you need performed in your situation are not done because you are taking too many people along with you. You only need people that will raise their faith level. Leave some of them folk behind. Everybody can't go to the next level with you. Why? Because in this day and time, Everybody got their own situation that they're going through. Uh-huh, they got family problems. They got problems on their job. Uh, they got issues in their life, but they can't take you. They don't need you weighing them down. You need to increase your faith. Uh-huh, as I said, you only need people that's going to the next level. But listen at this. The Bible declares, that Jesus wants to prove himself now. He goes to the little girl's room and he touches the little girl. And he says, Talitha Kumai, which means damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And I love Mark's writing. Mark's writing don't say one day or the next day, but Mark uses words like immediately and straightway. But the Bible says that immediately, immediately and straightway, the girl arose and they that were around were astonished. I'm telling you, he, this girl was not dead. 
she was alive. Your situation that you are going through right now. God is going to bring you through. Just as he did with this little girl. He raised the girl from the dead. And then what did people have to say? They were looking and saying, is this for real? People are going to say that about the situation that you're going through right now. They're going to look at you and say, it used to be. But is that Joe? Is that Jane? Is God touched their life? I remember when. But God. I say, but God. And to prove that this girl was alive, what did Jesus say? Give her something to eat. Or why are you going to feed somebody that's dead? But because I have raised her, Give her something to eat. Why? Because she is not dead. So then we leave there. We're going to Luke. Jesus is entering a city called Nain. And here again, something dead. There's a funeral procession. This mother was going to bury her only son. She was a widow and there was going to be much sorrow because nobody would be there to help her any longer. For all of her heirs, she didn't have any males left. And Jesus speaks to her and says, weep not. It was a Jewish custom that men didn't speak to women like that. Mm -hmm. But check this point out. This woman never asked Jesus for anything. She never asked for anything, but Jesus knew what she needed. I wrote that just to tell you this. He knows what you need. You don't have to ask him for anything. The Bible says, if you delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. He knows what you need. You don't have to ask him for anything. Mark my word. Blessings are coming your way. He knows what you need. He knows exactly what you're going through. Now custom says that he shouldn't have talked to this woman. But guess what? Sometimes it's time to tear down traditions. It's time to get rid of customs. He hears the cries of your heart. And I'm telling you today, he's going to tear down some barriers in your life. He's going to tear down some stuff to get you the deliverance that you really need. You accept it now in the name of our Lord. Whatever it takes. He's going to get the blessings to you. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door will be open. He's going to give you the things that you didn't even ask for. And sometimes you don't know what to ask for. But the spirit makes intercession for you. He knows what you need and he's going to supply your need. He's going to be right in the nick of time. He may not come when you want him and you know the rest. So Jesus took the time to stop the funeral procession. He went and touched the beer. 
said, young man, I say unto thee, arise. Now he goes speaking to dead folk. Remember I told you, it's not dead. He knows your situation. And the Bible says he that was dead sat up. When he sat up, he began to speak. And Jesus delivered him to his mother. It was a miracle that was only a foretaste of what was to come. So listen, I'm going to get to the meat of our text for today. Jesus gets the message that the ones that you love are concerned about the one that you really love. Talking about Lazarus, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Jesus had a connection with them. He really loved them. But when he hears about his friend, is sick unto death. He lingers for two days. He just hangs around. Uh huh. He doesn't respond right away. Someone that you love seems like you ought to just get on and go and see what they need. Anybody here love Jesus? You think he love you? You think he responds to your need right away? Yes, he does. Have you ever had to wait on him? You told him something, but you had to wait. When you wanted it, it wasn't the time for you to have it. No way. That, that's why you had to wait. Some of us cannot receive the blessings that he has for us at the time we want them because we are not ready. Listen. When he does not come when we want him, we just assume mm -hmm, that he is not hearing us. But I'm here to tell you today, just keep on praying for the Lord is nigh. Just keep on praying. You hear your cry. For the Lord has promised and his word is true. Just keep on praying. He'll answer you. Listen, sometimes seem like the more you call him, seem like he won't answer. The more you seek him, the further away it seems like it is. And you look around. And he's blessing everybody else. But it doesn't seem to be blessing you. And you go and you say something like this. You showed up for them. And they don't even pray. You showed up for them. They don't even come to church. You showed up for them. You paid their house off. And they don't even give tithe. You showed up for them. And their children are out of control. God, I know you got to answer my problem. I just want you to please, please, please just show up in my situation. But I want you to understand today. You just don't understand the timing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You don't understand his purpose because his ways are not like our ways. We got to trust him. We got to trust his delays because he wants to get the glory out of your situation. So the Bible says that after waiting for a couple of days, Jesus makes his way to his friend. He enters the city. Martha approaches him and says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But after talking over the situation with her, listen, Jesus tells her, thy brother shall rise again and 
What was Martha's response? Yes, Lord, I know he's going to rise again in the last day. But Jesus wanted Martha to know this one thing right here. You talking about a regular occurrence. You talking about an event. But I'm talking about a person. He tells her then, I am the resurrection. I am the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. So in the meanwhile, here comes Mary, the little sister. But she, when she reaches him, Mary falls at Jesus' feet and began to worship him. Then she uses the same statement. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And Jesus was moved with compassion with the saying that she had. The Bible says he was moved with compassion. And guess what? I really believe he was moved because Mary bowed down to worship him. And Jesus felt what she was feeling. And the Bible says Jesus wept. He felt what she was going through. And he has feelings just like us. He feels what we feel. Listen, the Bible says we don't have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but was in all points tempted just like we were. But yet... He did not sin. He feels our pain. He knows our every weakness. All we got to do is just take it to the Lord in prayer. Let me make this point and then we coming home. The statement of Martha and Mary was the same. But Jesus responds to them differently. Everything that Martha said, Jesus said something back to her. But Mary, instead of telling God or telling Jesus what her problems were, the thing that she did and the thing that we need to do today is first of all, worship him and then tell him what you are going through. Marinate. Worship him. Don't get down there with a long laundry list of stuff and start telling him, go ahead and worship him. Let him know who he is. Let him know how you feel about him. Worship him. Lay at his feet. Just like Mary did. She goes from a high place to a low place. Get down on your knees sometime and just worship him. Just let him know that you love him. Worship him for his greatness. Worship him for who he is. Just fall down. Worship. 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 You don't have to get on your knees right now, but let's worship him. Worship him. Just, just tell him something. Go ahead. Let's worship him now. Thank you, Jesus. Worship him. Oh, come. Let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him.
Lazarus out of this tomb now. Your situation is not dead. You have to have faith to understand that he sees your need. Martha has a little faith. Mary, a worshiper, has a lot of faith. Martha says, when Jesus asked, show me where you laid him. Martha's response was, I don't know whether you want to do that. He's been dead four days. I don't know whether you want to do that, Lord. But Jesus' response was, Martha, didn't I tell you that if you believe you're going to see your brother again? He's telling us the same thing. Some of the situations that we're going through only believe I'm going to make this thing happen for you. Listen, when you're right at the edge of your miracle, keep your mouth closed. Stop doubting. Stop saying how bad it looks. Take time to stop complaining. And your miracle will come quicker than you expected it to come. Keep your mouth closed. Don't stop your miracle with your doubting mouth. So Jesus prays. And he says, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. I know that thou heareth me always. But because of the people around me, because of these non-believers, I want you to show them that you have sent me. Sometimes we got to pray for the benefit of those that are around us that don't believe that God is who he's, that if God can do what he says he's going to do, you got to take the time and pray that their faith will be increased. But look what Jesus does. After he prays, he calls Lazarus by his name. And says, Lazarus, come forth. Listen, the situation that you're going through, let him call it out. He 
knows what it is. He will call it out by its name. You might wonder why your miracle hadn't showed up. You might feel like he doesn't care. But I want to ask you today, are you doing what's necessary to make your miracle show up? Are you believing God? Do you worship him? Do you adore him? So he says, Lazarus, come forth. And the Bible says, Lazarus came forth. But when he came forth, he was still bound. He was bound by the situation around him. He was bound by the clothes that he was in. He was called, but he was still bound. I'm telling you today to turn it over to Jesus. Whatever you have already given him, turn it over to him. Don't be bound by it. He will set you free. And he who the Son sets free is free indeed turn it over to Jesus so situations around Jesus told the folk that were around he didn't do it but he told those that were around loose the man loose the man loose the man and let him go and that's what he's saying to us today to loose your situation and let it go you're holding on too tight loose it turn it over to me if you would turn it over to me your marriage will be free your home will be free your health will be free your children will be free your finances will be free because it's not dead i'm in charge of what you're going through thank you jesus look 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 for deliverance look for deliverance it's on the way If you have a need today, you need prayer for your situation, you can come forth at this time. We'll pray. Look for your deliverance. It's on the way. of your sins you desire to be baptized in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the remission of sins he has promised that he will fill you with the precious Holy Ghost if you desire a church home you can come at this time. Whatever your need is, let it be known to our elders at the altar.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's on the way. It's on the way. It's on the way. It's on the way. Come on, let's put our hands together. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, let's give him some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Look for deliverance. It's on the way. It's not dead. Is not dead. Believe that. That God has it under control. I don't care what your situation is. God has it. And I'm admonishing everybody in here to raise your level of worship mm -hmm, and watch God move. Mm -hmm. You want him to move in a hurry? Get busy worshiping him. Raise your worship. Take it to a new level. Increase it from two minutes. <laughs> worship him. He will move on your behalf. God bless you. To our Facebook audience, thank you so very much for tuning in week after week and worshiping the Lord with us. We thank you so very much, and we look to see you again on this coming Sunday in our worship experience. And we ask you if you enjoy what we're doing, as you have been doing so much we thank you for how you give to this ministry. There are several ways on the screen there that you can give, and we ask that you do it. You're always doing it in fertile ground, and we just thank God for you. Come on, let's praise God for our Facebook audience, and we thank God for you. And until next week, may the Lord God bless you real good. Thank you for being a part of our worship service. We pray that you are encouraged by today's message. If you feel led, visit our website, rehobothunited.org, to learn ways you can give. To stay connected with us throughout the week, follow us on social media. Use the handle at Rehoboth United to find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. We believe that God has a place just for you. You are special in His eyes. Our hope is that you feel his love stronger today than ever before. We are believing God for a supernatural shift. Thanks again for being with us. See you next time.